solstice thank you so much for being here i'm claire cooley this is the creativity show today we're going to be talking about diy home decor and gift making um, in this season today being the shortest day the longest night it's wonderful to bring color and light back into our lives whatever you celebrate during the holidays uh, celebrating one another, celebrating the diversity on the planet of all the different cultures and beliefs is a wonderful, enriching thing to do. And celebrating nature, nature, our home. Uh, Earth is our only home, and it is, uh, you know, the mother, there's my son, <laughs> as I'm speaking about Mother Earth, uh, there's... Bodhi, the movie maker, his YouTube channel. Mine is The Creativity Show. And uh, are we up on Instagram now? He's so welcome to The Creativity Show. Today's show on winter solstice is all about DIY, home decor, and gift making. We can be economical and ecological. I like to call it righteous resourcefulness. And we're going to show you some ideas. I made this stencil outfit this morning. I also made a card from this mom stencil that we're going to show you in the gallery in a couple minutes. Um, but here's the gold, the gold mum on the mum. <laughs> and how quick and easy, fun, fast, frugal stenciling can be. There's so many different uses for stencils. There's um, note cards, covers of journals, which I'm going to do. And uh, there's home decor, wall friezes, or artistic accents. There's art, fine art, and wall hangings. There's um, platters and vases I've done with stencils. I've even done furniture, tables, and screens. I have many videos out about how to stencil and uses for stencils. Our last uh, virtual visit live stream was a tour of the Emerald Lady all sparkled up in her seasonal gift giving season, I like to call it, uh, decor. So you can see any and all of them after they are live up on the Creativity Show YouTube channel. So uh, you can see them again or any time in the future. You can share them with friends, and I really appreciate it when you tell a friend what we're doing. That's the best way to share these ecological, economical ideas with others. And Bodhi's turning on our gas fireplace. Um, we're in the process of going all electric in our home to be more ecological. So that's one of the many small steps many of us can take, as well as the artistic stuff, the creative stuff I'm going to be sharing every virtual visit about how we can take things like this, this outfit, it had um, discolored here. And so somebody gave it to a used store and I got it and thought, well, you know, with the mom here, no one's ever going to notice that little bit of discoloring. I have um, also done over stains. I've, uh, I've used stencils on clothes, scarves, hats, bags. And I'm going to show you a whole series of note cards we now have hanging in the gallery in a few minutes. And there... Um, SVGs are, I think, how many do we have up now? I think uh, nine. we have nine SVG flower designs out there on my website, Patreon, Patreon or Etsy. And 
Soon we're going to have a Patreon membership. So instead of paying about $3 a piece for the stencil designs, people can join Patreon and get all of the designs for no extra fee other than their minimal membership fee. And I have 300 designs, so they're going to keep coming out. I as anyone who knows me, I did the Book of Cranes and I wrote my memoir, uh, Incandescence Rising Above Darkness, and it's got over 60 pieces of art. My art's all inspired by nature. And so there's lots of birds, the warblers and wildflowers, pollinators, lots of flowers, grasses, all kinds of <clears throat> nature elements in my art and stencils. So I'm going to share with you the process in life, uh, the real time it took to make this mum stencil in a couple minutes. And we're gonna also show you it made into a card. And then we're gonna show you the other, the series of cards we have, um, uh up in the gallery the receiving gallery we call it here at the at the emerald lady when the house was built what year 1903 correct 120 years ago when this house was built makes me feel young <laughs> uh, 120 years ago it, the receiving room was where guests would wait for the master of the house to come down the grand staircase and greet them. So we call it the receiving gallery. We love having um, the opportunity to afford this house because it had so much deferred maintenance. It was on the market for 10 years. No one wanted to do that much work or pay contractors to do it. But Bodhi and I are both artists. We're used to long projects and so we did all the restoration ourselves except for some help in uh, learning how to uh, repair some things that were out of our look it up on the internet um, and my cousin who's built his house here uh, helped us learn how to pour concrete, build a retaining wall. And we did hire one guy to help with the heavy lifting of an enormous amount of rocks that were in a space that had collapsed in the cellar. But uh, Polishing the Emerald Lady is a video on the Creativity Show of showing us restoring, doing the floors, doing it all ourselves, which I loved. Um, doing and the, the, the enormous gratification of, of saving this historic building, which is in the Atlas of American Architecture with all the glorious buildings, um, properties here in Duluth, many gr much grander, but this, uh, this house and one other house is in Duluth or in that atlas. And uh, we didn't know that when we purchased the house, the previous owner didn't share that with us. Someone else did later. Um, so uh, that's that's a wonderful feeling. I see Bodhi's putting up some comments. You could read them because I can't. I Meg Litz said, mums, such a friendly flower. I have done wall stenciling, but never thought of fabric so clever. You have breathed life into this world in so very many ways. Love it. Wow, thank you, Meg. What a what kind words. And um, I do art ever since I was a little girl for the peace, for the happiness of stepping into the creative reverie. But I share it uh, for the gratification that I get in moving others, helping others. I call myself as a creativity coach, a guide for people on the way home to themselves. Everyone's creative. Every child plays and has an imagination that's vivid and active. And as we age, most people get what I call perceptual rigidity because of criticism and competition and comparison. So our world is full of fear-based control and, um, I try to 
keep returning to love-based, uh, expansive support of ourselves, love ourselves and, and express and enjoy your own imagination and walk lighter on the earth by finding uses for things instead of putting them in the landfill. And that's what I've done my whole life. Um, I, ne I do not feel sorry for myself ever or regret that I came from a really economically challenged, dysfunctional family, alcoholism, drug addiction. No one noticed I'd stopped going to school at seven. My mother was kind and wonderful and had four kids, but severe asthma and an alcoholic husband was always working. So she did the best she could. And I was really good at leaving when <laughs> all the other kids left for school and then just sort of disappearing on the way to school, hearing the school bell and coming home uh, at the right time to look as if, and I had gone to school and uh, good, I was real good at slipping through the cracks and creativity was what got me through the hardship. And we moved around so much. Um, I learned to look around me and see, are there some reeds or cattails or leaves or feathers or materials, shells, rocks that I can rearrange into something that pleases me and I'm having creative fun while I'm doing it and and I'm not caught it doesn't cost anything um, so that's what I've been doing my whole life and I have you know had times in my life where I had five minutes a day for creativity but I used it because I figured out that if I didn't I wasn't happy and I deserve to be happy because I don't wish anyone, else to be unhappy. I don't wish harm on anyone, even people that have hurt me. I wish them happiness. And so I deserve to be happy. And so do you. And so happiness comes from stepping into medically documented, stepping into creative flow. So the more we give ourselves permission to create, the more we look around us, instead of waiting for the perfect materials or the perfect tools, what do we have to work with? Find what's around you and use it to explore your own imagination and give that to the world and uh, magic happens there. I just heard this podcast. Um, I only listen to uh, sponsor free public radio stations and TED talks and things that I really trust the source of information. So I believe this is true. I've also experienced it that giving, we actually increases our happiness slightly more than receiving. So. I love giving gifts and I love even at the times of my life while I was supporting my two nephews and my mother by myself as a fine artist and I had no money extra. Um, my trust funder boyfriend at the time asked me, what's the most money you've ever had in the bank? And I said, well, the most I've ever had is like $300. And he, of course, came from a, a very, very wealthy family and was, you know, incredulous that that could be. But a lot of people have very little. Some people have nothing as far as funds. And I've been there too, homeless and lived in abandoned buildings. And But I've always had a curiosity and I've always had, I've been inspired by nature and nature is there and it's somewhere around us. And if we get to it, um, we can be replenished by natural beauty and the harmony in nature. So that's why it's the subject of my art. And one year I had absolutely no extra funds. And so I made gifts of a single willow branch with like five origami cranes that I hung from a string and had a little bead underneath them. So the willow branch and the origami cranes would bounce a little bit. And if they were put in something that they wouldn't fall down, just walking through the room, they would turn and the little 
the little crystal bead underneath the five cranes would sparkle and the cranes would turn. And I made one for everyone on my gift list. And years later, I would see these simple, simple uh, gifts still treasured and precious to the people I'd given them to. So we don't have to have funds. We just have to have a desire to give. And it is my observation that when we make something and we're thinking of the person while we're making it, it extends the happiness it gives us and them because we're putting our loving energy into it. And that's the reason I'm putting out my stencil designs. The reason I did my stencil designs is for those of you uh, who want to get them and use them any way you want and for pennies and in minutes, we can make a beautiful handmade, everyone is unique, even though it's made with a stencil because we painted ourselves and we can choose the colors. Everyone is unique, everyone is handmade and that card can be a treasured gift for our loved one for the rest of their lives. And it takes um, a couple minutes and it costs us pennies, um, but it is a gift that will be treasured. And so that's why I'm, I'm sharing my sensual designs for those who want to use them to make gifts, to make their home or workplace more beautiful, to make their wardrobe more them and express their aesthetic and make uh, clothes into art to wear. So um, let's show a little, let's show the uh, creating the card or this outfit that I did this morning. <laughs> um life is busy and so this morning i thought well let me let me uh see and i also slept in so uh that part of the thing i want to demonstrate here is how quickly this can happen so are you ready so, to show yeah. all right you uh gave me two options there how about you choose so you i can show the note card you made this morning or the sure. outfit let's you made this let's do morning. the note card first because this is this is my I think what I call righteous resourcefulness, this is something that so quickly um, we can make. Now this, this stencil is bigger than this five by seven card. So I just used part of it on the card and I'll show you how I kind of feather, not go off the edge, but, but, um, stop before the paper edge and i think it it looks beautiful that way so we can make it work um also the svg scalable vector graphics can be printed any size you choose uh you can um, download them on your computer and make them any size you choose and uh, print them in different sizes for different projects if if you want. And when I am um, stenciling, there are places, what you, what you want to be most careful of is not lifting up the stencil and smearing the paint underneath the piece of acetate. You want the paint to go right down through the cuts um, so the things that help the most with this process are having the right viscosity for your paint medium, meaning um, it's not too watery and will smear under the, under the acetate. You want it to go straight down into the cutaway parts. Um, and you can cut stencils i started um, with a razor blade then i moved to a hot knife and i did piece in uh, 48 different languages i cut with a hot knife um, i did a bunch of really delicate feathers my very first stencils years ago i had a few minutes before 
a exhibition and I thought, oh, those silk pajamas would be beautiful with these feather stencils that I've cut. So I, I made that outfit before the exhibition and, and um, <laughs> the people around me thought I was crazy for doing that right before the exhibition, but I pulled it off. And um, I like to, well, cre creating for me is a meditation. So that's why we restream these, um, showing you how I do the stenciling. Because while I'm doing it, I like to go into the wordless place. Um, I think Bob Ross is a really a wonderful, delightful human being and that he could talk during creating um, is kind of uh, marvelous and mysterious to me. I like to be silent while I'm creating and, and then talk about it after. The visual part of the brain and the word part of the brain are, are very different places. And uh, I don't actually live it's not my nature to live in the, in the word part of the brain, but I can go there and um, speak about it. Let's, let's show this outfit. Now, that was real time. So you saw how quickly that can happen. So let's, so, show. Yeah, let's show the outfit. But Meg said, wow, amazing that you could make and wear it in the same morning. Stencils can be used in part. So true. I think I would love stenciling butcher paper for wrapping gifts. And thank you for demonstrating. This inspires me to think how I might be creative. Great. That's the whole idea is to um, help inspire others to use what's around them, to use what they can afford, to use what they have. Uh, so nothing goes in the landfill, but anything that we can find a use for we do and to give handmade from our hearts loving it while we're doing it feeling the peace while we're doing it and give that to others and if you do stencils on uh on paper um i would suggest that you get a roll of white paper because that would be so much brighter and people will save it and um, the, use it, so use very little tape or use a ribbon they can untie. And so you, they don't have to tear the paper when they open your precious handmade stencil wrapping. So those, those are my suggestions there. You can get rolls of white paper very inexpensively. And uh, I would suggest that. Um, so, Let's move on to showing the, this outfit being stenciled. Now I could use the whole, the whole stencil on this outfit. Uh, so we'll see the whole thing being made. And this, um, there are places in stencils that you kind of want to scrub along. You have to look at the cuts in the stencil and say, you know, where shall I? go in a circular motion with the cone brush they're called um and where should i scrub along the lines like the stem and you want to be careful not to pick up the stencil until the very end um, so i use one hand to keep the stencil from moving and the other hand to paint along the lines Sometimes you want to go straight up and down with the stencil brush. Sometimes you kind of want to rub like in that circular motion I'm doing there. In a, so the paint really gets thoroughly through the cuts in the stencil. And sometimes you kind of want to draw the brush along the, uh, the cutaways in the stencil. And I've used stencils. Um, we have a video of the koi I put uh, in our third floor um, bathroom that is where creativity retreat guests stay. It's a whole independent little apartment up there. And the bathroom is all 
uh, water theme. So I put koi on the wall with stencils. So you can hold stencils up um, as long as your paint is not runny. It has to be thick enough to not run, especially if you're doing a uh, put your stencil on the wall to do freezes, which we also did. And we ha already have videos up about that, uh, showing that. So there's seahorses and a seashell theme in that bathroom um, along the edges and on the shower curtain. So uh, you can see that whole water theme bathroom in that video. In my bathroom, I did, uh, there's some flowering branches in the corners of the highest up on the wall, close to the ceiling. And then I use the same, we also have that video out. I use the same, the same branches. I think there's five different flowering branches. They'll be coming out in stencil designs uh, for purchase as well. I did them on uh, art that's in the in that bathroom. So the walls have the designs in the corners up by the ceiling and the two different uh, scroll uh, framed art I have in there have the same subject matter but done differently. So it's very harmonious and I like um, bright, subtle, and you know harmonious design. So uh, I often have here's the reveal of this coming up. My favorite part. Yeah, I love to have you know color themes. So my bathroom is kind of mauve and pinks and and silver. Um, so each area in the house has its theme. The guest bedroom on the second floor is the forever spring room with my 26 warblers and wildflowers uh, in small prints in my hand painted dowels. There's the reveal. I find that rather magical moment of pulling it up and, and seeing the delicacy we can create because the the drawing and the the cut stencil has has done the design work for us and we get to just use it over and over so um are there Meg any said being in flow is a concept chick sent me high researched and wrote about called flow because it is a psychological state that is metaphorically like being carried by a water current. So good for us. And how uh, beautiful. Yes, I did they, look up how to pronounce that Hungarian name, Csikszentmihalyi, a Hungarian psychologist. Beautiful. Well, um, I once had a judge going out with my girlfriend come to dinner and we had wonderful long conversations and he, she shared with me later that the judge said, how did she turn out so good? Her story's like the women uh, on death row. And that really got me to think about that answer for that. And why am I not an, drug addict, alcoholic, uh, serial killer. <laughs> That's not funny. It just sounded funny. But why am I happy and healthy with all that I've been through is a darn good question. And the answer is that I learned very young and, and I was blessed with a mother who was a fine art a uh, graduate of, a, of the Minnesota School of Arts um, next to the in most incredible museum in Boston. And she was sickly and lived with her aunt. So my mother spent all of her time with her severe asthma reading or walking slowly through the museum. So when, when I was born, her third child, um, art, I, 
I was exposed and, and I was allowed to go to museums. Um, and my mother always encouraged me to enjoy my own creativity and my own imagination. Um, and she didn't know that I was disappearing on the, just taking another path on the way to school into the fields or wherever I could go and, and building little bridges or making little assemblages of rocks and, and leaves, whatever I had to work with. Um, because I didn't want to worry her, but that's going in, stepping into the creative flow was how I found peace. And it restored me to come home at the end of the school day and deal with a family that there was lots of unhappiness. And my father, um, a brilliant alcoholic who was wounded and did some really dangerous things and was raging a lot. And the firstborn child, um, my older sister, whose sons I raised because of her drug addiction to deal with her pain, she was sort of first in line. And um, anyway, there was lots of unhappiness, lots of hostility, lots of uh, chaos. But because I found creativity as a sanctuary. Um, and I gave myself permission to go there whenever I could. Um, that's the answer to that judge. How did she, how come she's not on death row? I found a place to be safe. And that's what my mission is, is to help others find that place, which is why I say I'm a guide for people on the way home to themselves, because we all have it within us, that safe, serene, inspired, self-nurturing, satisfying place. And the more we access that, the more we live there, the more we visit it often regularly um, and share it with the world, the more peace we bring out to the world. And I do believe that the more people that are happy uh, and at peace, the more peaceful the world is. And from peace, we can create a more harmonious world. We can walk lighter on the planet, use our imaginations instead of credit uh, and, and have more harmony in ourselves, in our relationships with nature, in the environment with one another appreciate diversity so yeah it's it's um i i call myself a born again artist because i believe that create flow saved me and knowing i deserve to be happy and feel safe and loved and so does everybody else really we're all born innocent and things happen and we can be born remembering our ancestors traumas they have discovered this to be true um so we all are born born innocent and wanting to feel safe and loved and we're all challenged and so what we do with it is what defines us, not what happens to us or what happened to our ancestors that we're born with, but what we do with the traumas, the disappointments. Um, and I say, turn the uh, disadvantage to advantage by making it into art, the adversity into advantage by using it as fuel for creativity. So let's, let's show the gallery and the cards uh, that are the... So you got two videos to show. There's the stenciling all the note cards and then there's the gallery tour. Which would you like to show? Um, let's do the gallery tour next and then we'll do the stenciling all the cards that you'll see hanging uh, across the window in the gallery. Um, so I have 
over 500 paintings and drawings in my portfolio and here at the Emerald Lady, there's the ribbon rainbow that uh, I just love using the ribbons that over the years um, I collected, I couldn't just throw them away. They're beautiful. And, and last year I figured out to make them into rainbows. And this year I figured out how to make them kinetic um, by hanging them from a hook and a rubber band. So actually Bodhi had that idea. Um, maybe those little rubber band propelled airplanes little kids often play with. So there's my stationery and, and poster table. And um, there's the cards are up on the window there. And so that gold mum I did this morning and here are the different designs we have out now. Um, and they're, you know, a, a couple minutes to make the card, a few pennies for the those are actually nice five by seven paper. Here's my book of cranes that's printed on both sides, uh, all 15 species and um, accurate uh, text about the cranes, minimal, but something meaningful about each one of the 15 species. And uh, there's the original art that's on the cover of my memoir, one of the few pieces that there's a person in. Um, I love people, but I often contemplate nature for the serenity it offers. And it is, as I said earlier, you know, our mother, our home. And the more we live in harmony with uh, the world, the natural world, uh, the greater our, our chances of survival and our, our ancestors uh, in the future being able to inhabit this beautiful world. Um, so that's part of the reason I'm all about DIY and finding uses for things instead of putting them in the landfill and using our imagination instead of uh, currency. Um, if we have m more money than we need, there's always things we can do to help others and, uh, you know, use our imaginations instead of credit and, uh, and have more peace and more fun creating. So step into the creative flow and it is medically documented, scientifically proven that it increases our happiness. And I love hearing um, that giving gives us slightly more happiness than receiving. Both are nice and, and we like both, but um, I find it very telling that I've always loved to make gifts in whatever range of time or materials I can afford or I have available. Um, and that's really what I look forward to in the gift giving season is, is giving gifts. So, um, so let's show how quick these cards can happen. There you go. So there's a bunch of different designs and colors here. Um, Here's the rose and uh, a lot of them are two color and some of them are one color. And I use golden acrylics. Um, because they, uh, their viscosity is perfect for stenciling. And, so, and most of these paints, and I did this in two steps, I guess. Most of these paints I've had for years, and you need very little. And I often, the, if I'm, uh, you know, I use them up. 
if I put them in a little cup like that to mix a particular color, I try to use it up instead of wash it down the drain um, or I let it dry and wipe it out and so it doesn't go into the water system. And um, I try to be, I have a waste as little as possible in life. Uh, and so now we're gonna speed it up and show you a bunch quickly. Um, and sometimes they get a little bit too thick and you can just put a, you know, a few drops of water in it and bring it back to the right viscosity to flow just enough to get through the stencil, um, but not smear underneath and I often do, um, you know, the card and then use the extra paint for another project. Um, on, on Christmas morning, I'm doing another live stream at 11 virtual visit. And I'm going to show making these same designs into prints, which are also gorgeous gifts. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see that. And the other uses for stencils, as I've said, wall freezes, wall art, wall hangings, fine art, clothes, scarves, hats, uh, bags, gift bags are a wonderful idea. I have a, um, I have bags and, and uh, beautiful colored tissue paper that we use every year. We don't throw any of them away. And when I give gifts, I give them in bags that people can reuse. There's nothing thrown away. All the ribbons that people have given me over the years, you saw in the ribbon rainbow. And so there's, it's no waste. Um, and I feel really good about that. So um, it's, it's wonderful to have our materials, tools, supplies organized enough so that when inspiration hits, we can go right to the tools or materials um, that we need to fulfill that inspiration instead of getting distracted or wasting precious time looking for stuff. So I'm all about uh, be organized enough, spend enough time organizing so that when inspiration hits, you can have more time doing the fun part, creating. And if ever I'm overwhelmed, I organize something. And if I'm really overwhelmed, which happens to everyone, including me, I organize something uh, small and then I know while I'm getting grounded organizing my jewelry making supplies or my paints or my sewing uh, closet, I have towers, uh, we'll show you those at some point, that have drawers. So there's a sewing section, there's an art supply cabinet, and then there's craft tower. And so everything has a logical place. So I don't really have to remember where everything is. I just like, where's the most likely that this item will be used? And I have it in either the sewing tower, the craft tower of drawers, the fine art cabinet. So I don't have to <clears throat> remember all these things. I just think logically about where to put it away and then I can just go to it and, and find it even years later, um, which happened with the ribbons. They were, they were stored in uh, a bag for many years, just added to, and then last year I separated the colors and, and made them into the, the ribbon rainbow. And uh, so those are some ideas, hopefully, um, 
spark your imagination and every uh, virtual visit. Uh, I love hearing from you. I love the comments. I love, I really appreciate it when you tell a friend about it. The best, the best way to spread the word is word of mouth, uh, someone you care about. Um, everybody wants to be more creative. I've heard that throughout my life. So give yourself permission to explore your curiosity and express your creativity. And on Christmas, I'm going to be giving away um, free creativity coaching consultations with me. I love helping people. I love listening to them, what inspires them, what motivates them and helping them find a way to fit their joyous explanation of the uh, exploration of their creativity into their lives and commit to something that then they can feel good about themselves. They completed and share that joy with others uh, when they feel ready. So I see you put up a comment that I can't read. So you could read Meglitz it. Meglitz said, uh, the kinetic ribbons are so fun. And then she said, so true. I honestly think giving can be even more fun, satisfying than receiving if it's from and for the heart and soul. Absolutely. Well, I love, I love it when they, um, you know, medically document by watching, you know, in MRI brain waves and hooking people up to sensors. And I, I, I love it when what I feel is validated with science, which is yes, the happiness that, that we feel uh, giving is is slightly greater than the happiness of receiving. Uh, they're both good and they both increase our happiness. But I say, increase your happiness by first creating something to give. While you're creating it, you're increasing your happiness and then giving it. And they say that watching, uh, being present when the person opens the gift or receives it is also very happiness increasing, but I sometimes, um, especially during these, this era, uh, that we've been in of social distancing, I just imagine them opening it and that, that works for me. I have a very vivid imagination. So that's happiness increasing. So net on Christmas morning, we're going to show you the prints of really easy, beautiful, and very, um, a lot of people find them very valuable. They think they're they're very special, and it's a really easy thing to make as a gift. Um, and so the cards are small and can go with a gift or be a gift themselves, or a set of them could be a gift. But the prints are a piece of fine art, and uh, if you make it yourself, um, it has that special meaning. Um, so... We're gonna show you that on Christmas morning and um, Santa's gonna be here and there will be an elf. So please uh, tune in at 11 central time and uh, tell a friend or share it with friends later. So like I said, everything goes up on the creativity show so you can see it again or anytime you want to or share it with others. So thanks so much for being here and uh, may your shortest day of the year, longest night be full of inner light and may you find color and bring color into your life in this season that can be very monochromatic by using your imagination and your creativity. So Share your light, your love, and, and your color, your, your art, your creativity with others. Thanks so much. See some people saying happy solstice, including Meg Litz. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Happy solstice. And uh, 
see you Christmas and that'll be the last of this series, but we will move on. We'll keep going and the creativity keeps flowing. So happy solstice. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bodie.